Hello and welcome to the Makeup Lab for Unit 6, the Decomposition of Baking Soda and Stoichiometry Lab. The purpose box reads, 1. Observe a reaction between sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, and hydrochloric acid, HCl, to produce materials that are safe to handle such as sodium chloride, NaCl, water, H2O, and carbon dioxide gas, CO2. 2. Calculate the moles of sodium bicarbonate used and the moles of the solid product, NaCl, produced and compare the experimental mole ratio to theoretical stoichiometry predictions for the mole ratio in order to determine if a reaction occurred. The description of setup. Stoichiometry is a method chemists use to determine the amounts of reactants necessary to produce a desired amount of product. Stoichiometric equations also give chemists valuable information about the quality of the experimental design used during the reaction by comparing the theoretical yield to the actual experimental data collected in the lab. In today's activity, you will calculate moles of reactants and products. The information will be used to compare the theoretical yield of a product to the actual experimental yield collected in the lab. While doing this activity, look for possible design errors and explain any differences in the numbers. Our materials, we're going to be utilizing some baking soda. The formula of the baking soda is, according to the uh, purpose box, is NaHCO3. It's this white uh, powder. Also, I'm going to be making use of some HCl pre-measured in this graduated cylinder. We have our Bunsen burner. And the Bunsen burner is underneath our setup for this ring stand, which contains the iron ring. This clay triangle, which is going to act as the uh, place where the evaporating dish sits while it's being heated. We also, of course, also have the striker to ignite the Bunsen burner. We have a chemical scoop to obtain the desired quantity of our sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda. And we have the electronic balance here so that we can get the designated um, mass of the baking soda reactant. And we're just going to follow through with the procedure. First of all, we need to obtain the mass of the um, aluminum foil evaporating dish prior to um, getting the reactants in it. So I place it on the electronic balance, that's been zero. And the mass that I want to record is 1.4 grams. So turning the paper to the second side where it says mass of dry watch glass and evaporating dish, go ahead and cross out dry watch glass. And it's just going to be the dry evaporating dish. And we record as it says 1.4 G for grams. Moving on in the procedure, it tells us to uh, measure the mass with the dry watch glass. Again, we're not worrying about that. But step three says obtain one gram of the NaHCO3 baking soda. So I have my baking soda here. I'm going to measure out one gram. So I'm going to go ahead and re-zero the balance and add baking soda until it says 1.0. So my first addition gets me 0.4. Second addition, not much more than that at 0.5. I just don't want to overshoot it. And that got me to 0.9, so not much more needed. Almost. It went there and then it went back. I get a little bit more. A little bit spilled off. So now I have my one gram of baking soda. Perfectly one gram, 1.0. So I want to turn my lab sheet again to the data table side. And then on the third line it says mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. I want to put 1.0 grams in that position there, the third spot. In the spot that says massive dry wash glass, dry evaporated dish, and sodium hydrogen carbonate, I'll go ahead and cross out dry wash glass, and it's just going to be the evaporating dish and sodium hydrogen carbonate. 1.4 plus 1.0 is 2.4 grams. So I write the 2.4 grams there. You can see 2.4 minus the 1.4 of the dish is going to leave us with the 1.0 grams for our baking soda. The other two spaces are for the conclusion of the lab. Now that we have the one gram of baking soda in the evaporating dish, skipping step four, because it was measured in the evaporating dish, I want to add my 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to the evaporating dish. And as it says in step seven, I want to do this slowly. 
the reaction will get will produce um, three products. One of those products, carbon dioxide, which is the fizzing that we see here when we add the HCl. So we want to do it just a little bit at a time so we don't overreact with respect to the material having it overflow the evaporating dish. So I've added about five or six milliliters letting the reaction calm down a little bit. I'll go ahead and add some more. This is going to continue to fizz until all of the baking soda is reacted. In this case we have excess hydrochloric acid as a reactant which means that all of the baking soda will be gone before all of the acid is gone. Their quantities though are very close to one another in terms of those perfect amounts of each reactant ingredient. So the sign of reaction I see lots of fizzing very very fine bubbles as the baking soda reacts with the hydrochloric acid. Maybe give it a little bit of a stirring. As it completes its reaction, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing next. We're going to be setting this evaporating dish at the completion of its reaction on the pipe stem triangle. We'll get the Bunsen burner ignited, get that desired flame that will allow us to heat it slowly and start that heating process. Looks like all the fizzing is now done on the uh, baking soda hydrochloric acid mixture. I don't know if you can see that, but we do have the clear colorless liquid that's left over there. A little bit of bubbling still occurring, but not nearly as much as the initial fizzing. So the reaction pretty much at its completion. So I'm going to go ahead and move this off to the side here. And we'll get this Bunsen burner ignited, turning the gas jet so it's parallel. Pull the Bunsen burner out, thumb screw valve closed, open it up, I can hear the gas flowing, get a little bit more, get that Bunsen burner lit, I want to open the air intake valve until we get a blue flame, not much more than that though because uh, we don't want to see the blue cone inside, that will be too strong heating, uh, too strong heating occurring there. Um, but of course we can also adjust the gas quantity itself in terms of higher or lower for the gas flow. So we want a nice gentle heating that's going to be occurring here. So then that Bunsen burner flame looks pretty good. The flame is about at this height which is about matching the height of the ring of the ring stand. Four or so inches. So I'm going to go ahead and take the evaporating dish and its contents, place them on the pipe stem triangle and put the Bunsen burner underneath. The Bunsen burner is going to proceed to heat the mixture in the evaporating dish um, until such time that all of the liquid is driven off, which includes these steps. Heat the evaporating dish with the small flame until all the liquid has evaporated. Be sure to watch it carefully. Remove the flame when only dry solid remains. We're going to allow the dish to cool. It calls for five to ten minutes, but it's not going to be that long needed as the aluminum does cool off relatively quickly. Um, and then we're going to record the new mass of the aluminum evaporating dish and the solid product that remains. And then start in on our cleanup. get a close-up view. So that mixture is starting to gently boil. A lot of little bit of bubbling occurring there. Hard to make it out. You can kind of see it over here. That gentle boiling is occurring. So we pretty much have the full volume left over. Um, it'll take a little bit of time, 10 to 15 minutes or so, to get all of the liquid to be boiled off. We don't want the video to be that long, just like on the cooking channel. We have the materials already prepared for us. So then, we do have our solid material in this particular evaporating dish. 
we have to adjust our numbers there, but we're going to see what our difference is going to be and write those next to the data table that we got, finding very close similarity within each of these. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put this on the electronic balance and see what we get. So I'm going to re-zero that. This has been cooled, done just previous to this particular lab setup. There we zero that. Huh. Do that again. Come on now. There we go. Finally cooperating. So here we have our dry watch glass. This measures 2.0 with the solid product. The swatch glass here, prior to putting in the baking soda, had a mass of 1.3. And that 1.3 going to be the um, value of just the evaporating dish. So if you could, please write 1.3 to the right of where we have 1.4. Put it in parentheses, and this will kind of make it so that it's obvious that you are watching the video. And then write down the mass of the watch glass evaporating dish and solid product. Please write an arrow pointing to the right inside the space there to indicate that we have this second material used from a previous run of the experiment. And write that down as 2.0. Put that in parentheses as well. So the 1.3 after the 1.4 and the 2.0 after the arrow pointing to the right to indicate the second quantity. Now what we need to do is figure out how much the mass is for the solid product itself. If the evaporating dish and the solid product is 2.0 and that first unused evaporating dish from not being this one was 1.3, all we do is take the difference. And 2.0 minus the 1.3 gives us 0 0.7 grams and that 0 0.7 grams is the ideal number that we were expecting for this lab. All there's left to do is calculate the moles of the sodium hydrogen carbonate, calculate the moles of the NaCl product, write the experimental mole ratio. Now that's going to be the answer for number one to the answer to number two with a colon in between to set up that ratio. The balanced equation, writing that, noting that the five um, substances, two reactants, and three products are in number one here with their formulas. So basically convert that into an equation. And then after that, getting it balanced, you have the theoretical mole ratio. For the theoretical one, you want to use the coefficients of the substances from the equation in number four. And that completes the video for this particular lab just a matter of making sure you get that to your teacher prior to the Friday due date or on the Friday due date. Thank you very much.